Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and this is week 13 of the Stash Buster block series and today our block is called Fence Row and this is another beginner friendly block. It uses half square triangles and squares in just two colors. For this quilt block I chose some reproduction 30s fabrics and the fabrics that you need, you just need your background and you need a main color and you only need two different sizes of blocks. So for your main fabric, you actually only need two pieces or three pieces. You need two that are four and seven eighths of an inch and then you need one that is four and a half. And then for your background, you need two that are four and seven eighths and then you need four that are four and a half inches square. So we're going to do the um, half square triangle method. Catch my pen here. I have a water soluble pen, or I guess this is air soluble pen, and I've got a ruler, and I'm going to mark my um, line, my diagonal line, on the wrong side of each one of my four and seven eighths inch squares. And this is my, actually it's a sewing guideline and a cutting guideline. I'm going to sew a quarter inch from on both sides of this line and then I will also cut there. So I'm going to match these up with the four and seven eighths inch main color squares. So we're just going to separate these, do right sides together, line up all the raw edges and then I'm going to stitch a quarter inch away from this line on both sides. Now each one of these sets will make two half square triangles. So that's why you only need two of these and that'll give you the four that you need. So the thread I'm using is So Fine by Superior. It's color 401. So Fine is a 60 weight thread and it is um, a polyester thread. Actually, this is a 50 weight thread, excuse me. It's a 50 weight thread. It's very thin. It helps improve the accuracy because it is so thin. And my stitch length is at 2.5. That's just a standard stitch length. Most of the more modern machines are, they automatically set to that. Okay, here we go. And just cut my thread tails and then I need to cut this in half. So you can cut these with a rotary cutter or you can use your scissors and it's just easier for me to use my scissors so we're just going to cut those in half and then just repeat for the next um, set of four and seven eighths inch squares. cut off any uh, thread tails. Now these scissors are Fisker's Soft Touch. I'm not real comfortable using these yet. Um, I keep trying. They just may not um, be the right scissors for me, but if you look at them when they have a spring in here that keeps them in an, in an open position and then to close 
it's supposed to be easier on your hands, especially people with arthritis, so that way you don't have to manually open them. They will open automatically. And then it has a lock here to push them, to keep them locked. So they're a little bit, they open a little bit wide for my hands. So um, I never thought I had small hands, but <clears throat> evidently they're a little bit small for those kinds of scissors. So, okay, now we're gonna do some pressing. Okay, I do have steam on my iron right now, but you don't have to have that. I'm going to press all of these to the dark side, so I'm just going to press them the way they are sewn, and then open up the dark side, and then we have one half square triangle. I'll do the same. So whatever side you want your seam pressed to, lay that side up, and it just makes it a little bit easier for you. Now if you're using steam like me, um, just be a little extra careful, especially on these half square triangles, because this is now a biased edge where you're pressing. Um, you cut it right down corner to corner on your square, so now you have a biased edge. So you need to be careful that you don't press those out of shape. Well, the next thing that I want to do is I want to cut off the little dog ears that form from this triangle. All <clears throat> they don't serve any purpose that I can see and they do create a little extra bulk in your quilt. Um, it's really not a major problem at the piecing stage. Uh, it gets to be a problem when you're quilting and because that's just extra layers that you have to quilt through. And if you were doing like um, doing a project where you've got four of these squares coming together you, you'll have an awful lot of fabric right there in that one point it'll make it hard to press it open and uh, hard for it to quilt through okay so now all I need to do is to lay out the block and I want to start with the four and a half inch square and that's going to go in the center and then the half square triangles are just going to face that block. So your focus fabric is going to face the center piece. So we have that. And then you're just going to fill in the other squares with your background four and a half inch squares. So here's your block right there. So now we just need to sew these pieces together in rows and then we'll sew the rows together. So I am just going to get these kind of lined up ready to go and then just sew these all each one of these and then I'll add the last piece to it okay you could chain piece all of this together but I am going to just do one row at a time so I'm just going to do the first two pieces in the top the top row which is row one cut my threads and so I have this and now I'll add um, the third piece to it which is the other half square triangle And this is what row one looks like. So now we'll work on row two. And this is all the single blocks, the single four and a half inch blocks. Piece number three. 
And so there's row two. Now row number three. And then we can press these and then um, put them together and we'll have our completed block. So we're almost done already. Okay, here's the bottom row. And those two pieces, we got one more to add to it. row three. So now we're going to press these and put the block together, put all the rows together. Okay, now the way you press these blocks, you can do it either way. You can, uh, you can press towards the dark, which would be like that, or you could press towards the light, uh, whichever way you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and press towards the dark, and um, so that would be Just like that. Now these blocks are going to want to go the other direction. They're not going to want to press that way because you've got the seam here is going to cause some resistance. But I usually find it can be done fairly easily. So we're going to And I am a two-handed presser. I use both hands when I press. And what pressing towards the dark does in this block is it alternates those seam allowances so that it's easier to sew them into rows. Let me press that flat first. There we go and then press it open. Now I'm ready to sew all these rows together. So I'm just going to sew row one and two. And I'm going to, uh, first I'm going to press that seam back a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to nest these seams together. And what that means is where the, um, where the seam is, I want I don't want any space between them and I don't want them overlap so you kind of butt them up against each other and I'm going to put a pin there um, and hold that in place. I'm going to do it on both of these and you don't have to pin these if you don't want to. It'll keep them from shifting while I'm sewing these two rows together. So now I just need to sew down along here. Okay so I just need to make sure that my raw edges are even. And so with my quarter inch seam allowance. And I just have to watch that seam, make sure it doesn't flip. And then do the same here. So here is what we have so far. And then we're going to do the last row. Just make sure you've got the 
direction of your half square triangles where they need to be and butt up those seams. Just nest them together and I want to go ahead and put my pen in. And then do the same here. is done. We just need to press it open. So there is the block. Okay, so here the block is ready and I'm going to um, press the seams the way they were sewn. Just press them flat. And then once again, you can choose whichever way you want these to um, lay. I'm going to have them all going towards the center block. Let's see how that works. And we'll do the same here. And give it a little bit of steam to the lay nice and flat. And there we have the fence row block. Okay, I made four of these fence row blocks. I wanted to show you what they look like if you laid them all side by side. And so we have two. three and four and so here's the design you get it looks like kind of a big star you'd wind up with a, a nice spot here to do some uh, quilting and as well as these areas here now this is a symmetrical block so it doesn't really matter which way you turn it you're just going to get the same look it's not going to change so there's really only one layout for these blocks if you put them side by side but of course you could do an alternate set where um, you could put an alternate block in between uh, a plain block or it could be another piece block you could separate these by sashing and then of course you could just use them as um, you know one block in a in a, a sampler quilt so there you have it there is the fence row quilt block in every video in this series you will find a link in the description box that goes to my blog and you'll have the written instructions for that particular block so you can go there and get those and um, then of course you have this video to give you some visual instructions so I hope you're enjoying this series and uh, if so I hope you will give this video a thumbs up and uh, click the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already and don't forget to click that notification bell so that you'll be notified when the next video comes up. I am posting twice a week at this point and uh, you have quilting videos as well as the piecing videos. So I thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas click on the video links and to keep up with my latest projects click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.